legacy. An afternoon ago, I bared my legs, my arms. I lifted my face to the March sun. It pressed its heat onto my lids, pressed its yellows and its reds, called up from summer past buzz of Katie did, an easeful afternoon, marigolds and the hands hot hold on husband, love, all these pungencies pressed onto me. Then heat reached deeper, touched what I had shoved and heaped into a place of no shame, few dreams. I, forgetting how the mounded and the dead will startle again, will rise up from thawed ground, seek audience. Now this sorrow will seep up like a sheening of new grass. Fires in Baghdad flare out of every blade, and the bright, sharp edges of broken day, broken night, rain down, rain down into the cupped hands of my daughter. This, her inheritance. All the children tussle with flame, run toward us, Seek water at our glistening stream. They have come from the ancient ruined fountains. Daughter, how can we rack ice and widen the stream, take up the living and the dead, bathe all these wounds, slake the thirst of these innocents? Il y a un après-midi que j'ai découvert les jambes, les bras. J'ai levé le visage au soleil de Mars. Il a pressé sa chaleur sur mes paupières, enfoncé ses jaunes et ses rouges, rappelé d'un été passé, le bourdonnement de sauterelles, l'après-midi aisé, les soucis et la prise chose de la main sur Marie. Amour, toute cette accrété est enfoncé sur moi. Puis la chaleur attendue plus loin, touché ce que j'avais fourré et entassé en une lieu d'aucune honte et plus de rêve. Moi, oubliant comment les entassés et les morts sursauteront encore, se lèveront de la terre dégelée, chercheront audience. Maintenant, ce chagrin s'infiltrera comme un lustrant d'herbe nouvelle. Les feux à Bagdad s'embrassent de chaque brin et des bords coupants et éclatants du jour cassé, nuit cassé, pleuve fort, pleuve fort dans les mains ouvertes de ma fille. Ceci, son héritage, ceci, son héritage. Tous les enfants se battent contre les flammes, courent vers nous, cherchent l'eau à notre ruisseau luissant. Ils ont venu des anciennes fontaines ruinées. Fille, comment pouvons-nous fracasser glace et élargir ce ruisseau, prendre les vivants et les morts, laver toutes les blessures, apaiser le soif de ces innocents? For a young girl. Now you turn away from us all. Seek the beginning of the dream, running around and around your perfect post and beam house. You smile at each eager face, every urgent word as you go. All that has been proffered, you return. Apple, bread, sweet berry, cream. Your father and mother become clouds adrift among all the others that flit aimless over the gray of this winter sky. Their cries become only far wind and whispers in a landscape you leave behind. When you, 11 years old, 
drew the harbor seal in the center of your laboriously printed first report, submerged, smooth-headed, with its huge eyes staring out, eyes that your hand had colored darker and darker, black circles round and round and rounder. If we had looked at this picture longer or better, would we have seen a presage of your drowning? Would we have seen a portent of your descent to the bone? Your own huge eyes gazing and vague, startling us as the skin on your face became taut, as you became thinner and thinner. A diminishment. Toward what dream do you go now, down to what deep? A single heart beating? Why leave your lovely, lithe body like a spent chrysalid? Where now, after drowning, will you fly? Toward a universe always asleep, where mouths do not open to eat or to speak, where girlish bosoms never swell with milk, where apples do not fall from the trees, where the maggot never creeps. This is a poem I wrote quite a few years ago, but that um, I still love to uh, read and also imagine myself in this spring setting. It's called First Fiddleheads. After the fog lifted, I saw the fiddleheads had broken out of their brown husks last night. Like monks, hoods down, spring giddy, their faces glisten in the sun. I picked a handful, thinking I'd save them to share with you. But the winter was so long, and the furled ferns so green, I could not count, could not divide these blessings. Instead, I cooked them quickly and ate them alone in my own rite of spring. <laughs> 